welcome you all to my channel if this is your first time of coming to my channel thanks a lot don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe so in today's video we are going to making a simple video on how to cut yoke jumpsuits yoke jumpsuits so what are the basic measurements required our bust is 36 we have 36 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1 we have 10.5 10.5 our waist is 32 32 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 10 our hip is 36 36 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1 we have 10.5 our round lap is 24 so note that you have to divide your round lap by 2 and not by 4 so we have 24 divided by 2 we have 12 plus 2 inches for our sewing allowance we have 14 inches our trouser length is 45 right our trouser length is 45 plus 2 inches for our sewing allowance we have 47 inches our shoulder is 14 inches we have 14 divided by 2 we have 7 plus 1 we have 8 inches now because it is jumpsuit it simply means the combination of your basic block to your trousers so you also go ahead to measure your shoulder to half length and your half length is simply one inch or it's simply one inch above your nav so these are the measurements required in order for you to cut your yoke trousers now another thing you're also going to take note of is how many inches you want to take off from your upper bodies to fix in your yoke and note that the number of inches you take away determines how deep you are going to have your yoke effect okay where we are going to make use of our lace to achieve this jumpsuit to join us on facebook td designs and on instagram td designs and also visit our website where we have amazing illustration for you and with me here i have my pattern paper now pattern paper are available at our store and it comes in a bundle and it's about 60 inches long so we have both the white pattern paper and this brown pattern paper and one thing i love about this pattern paper is the height guys the height is about 60 inches so when you want to cut dresses that requires long length like our trouser length where we are going to have 47 inches i'm going to be making use of this white um, brown pattern paper white pattern paper so both the white pattern paper and the brown pattern paper are available at our store. Our uh, basic measurements shoulder to bust 10, shoulder to arm hole 9 and half, shoulder to under bust 13 and half, shoulder to waist 18. Now, waist to hip, waist to hip 9. Waist to knee length, 17. And we have a jumpsuit length, which is 63 inches. So we go ahead and take our length. Once we are done with that, we'll go ahead and connect the lines together. Mark our dart measurement. So label your lines. So we go ahead and mark our that. We go ahead and mark our that measurement, which is four inches. We we'll mark our that four inches. Mark our that four inches. Now on the waistline, we we'll go ahead. So let's go ahead and connect these lines together. So on the waistline, we'll go ahead and mark half inch on both sides. We we'll connect our dart line together. So we've gone ahead 
to connect this together now we are going to go ahead and mark our basic measurement which is our shoulder measurement is seven inches we've gone ahead to mark our shoulder measurement which is seven inches we mark our bust which is 10.5 mark our waist which is 10 mark our hip which is 10.5 now we'll go ahead and connect these lines together we'll use our hip curve our arm or curve to connect our shoulder line to our bust line this is what we have for the upper part of our jumpsuit so this is like our top for the jumpsuit now the front block looks like for the upper part so we we'll set this aside for the back block we we'll go ahead and mark our zip allowance i'll be making use of two inches for my zip allowance i will go ahead and connect the lines together so i'm done with that we'll go ahead and mark our dart measurement mark your dart Connect the lines together. This is what we have. On the waistline, go ahead and mark half inch on both sides and connect it together. Now you go ahead and mark your shoulder measurement which is 8 inches we mark our bust 10.5 mark our waist 10 mark our hip so we'll go ahead and connect the lines together Then we'll connect our arm to our shoulder line. So this is what we have for the back block. So I'll go ahead and cut this out. Just to achieve the lower part of our jumpsuit, which happens to be a trousers. Now what you're going to do is this. Because we are attaching our trousers to our basic block, you mark one inch first. You mark one inch where our waistline started from, but this is the one inch allowance we left because we are going to attach these trousers to the upper block. So from this line now, you now go ahead and mark your hip measurement from this point. So I've gone ahead to mark my hip, I'll mark my knee length, and I'll go ahead and mark my trousers. They are done with that. You go ahead and connect the lines together. After connecting the lines together, you go ahead and use your hip measurement to divide your measurement by two. So I have 11 inches. So 11 divided by two, we have 5.5 inches. So we go ahead and mark 5.5 inches. Mark 5.5. 5.5 now what we are using this um what why we are dividing our hip measurements is so that we can have a box so you mark your 5.5 and your 11 inches 5.5 and 11 inches so you go ahead and connect the lines together and to divide it to give us a box now for you to get your flap measurement simply mark one inch below your hip line that gives you your crotch measurement or your flap measurement so you come down with you mark one inch one inch below your hip line this is our hip line so you go ahead and connect this So this becomes a flap or crotch line. Now, you are going to go ahead and mark your waist measurement. Our waist is 10 
divide 10 by 2 you have 5 inches so you place your 5 inch this way and then you mark your 10 and you mark what you have now the essence of you dividing it is that it makes your allowance to fall on both sides equally now you mark your hip measurement of course because we made use of the hip measurement to get our box your hip measurement is going to fall at this part now on your flap line you go ahead and mark your round lap on your flap line my round lap is 24 so divided by 2 we have 12 plus 2 inches we have 14 so we go ahead and mark our round lap on this flap line okay you mark it on this flap line now you now move to your round and foot so for our round foot we have 12 inches so you go ahead and place your 12 inches divided by 2 you have 6 place the 6 on this line and mark the both sides okay so this is what you are going to have and connect the lines together so this is what we have and you will connect your round lap up to so this is what we have you also go ahead and connect this for this other part connect your waist to your hip line go ahead and connect your waist to your hip go ahead and cut this out cutting it out this is what we are going to have for the front block i've simply gone ahead to place my front block on another piece pattern paper i'll go ahead and tape this down our back block is usually higher than the front block with about one and a half. So I've gone ahead to mark one and a half. We'll connect the lines this way. So this is what you are going to have. Now on this flap line, on this flap line, go ahead and mark three inches on your flap line that is you are extending your flap line with three to extend our flap line with three inches so that we can have this easy movement around your crotch area so you extend it to three inches now while you move to this part you also reduce it so here we have three inches you mark two and a half two inches two inches so you go ahead and connect it together that will give you the so you can see what we have what we just did was that we went ahead to extend our crotch line with three inches two and a half two inches all the way and then you connect it together now at this crotch line we have three inches you also do the same while you descend you reduce the measurement so we have three inches we mark two and a half mark two inches one and a half and you can just maintain that all the way so we'll go ahead and connect it together basically the difference between the back and the front is just increasing your crotch line or your flap line with three inches while you decrease you also reduce it and you do the same for this other side so I'll go ahead and cut this out. This is what we have for the back block and this is what we have for the front. And this is what the lower part looks like. So, we'll go ahead and set this aside. For the front block, because this is going to be a jumpsuit, a top length is going to stop at the half length. Okay, this is where we have our underboss and our waist. So basically our upper body is going to stop at the waistline you don't need this lower part because this lower part is where we are going to fit in the trousers to it but add one inch to your waistline add one inch to your waistline now why are we adding this one inch it's because we need this one inch for our sewing allowance to attach it to the trousers so we go ahead and mark one inch 
So we connect the lines together. So we connect the lines together. Now we go ahead and cut this out because it is jumpsuit. So this is what we have. But make sure you add an extra inch so that by the time you stitch it to your trousers, you are not going to have like um, a tight flap, okay? Now, once you are done with that, you are going to determine your neckline. You go ahead and determine your neckline. Now, because what we want to achieve is a yoke neckline, go ahead and determine how many inches deep you want your how many inches deep you want your yoke to start from okay how many inches you want your yoke to start from so I'm going to make use of about five inches about five inches so I want my yoke to start from here I'll go ahead and mark the wideness of my neckline which I'm going to make use of three and a half and the depth of it because we are going to fix in yoke I'm going to make use of three inches so I'll go ahead and connect my neckline together so this is our neckline and we determined we took away four inches this is where we want our yoke to start from so we'll go ahead and make this a straight line now we also want our lower part of our yoke to give us a sweet art form so we go ahead and give this a sweet art this way so what we did here was that we took away four or five inches for our yoke and we went ahead and we marked our neckline and because we want here to give us a sweet art we just went ahead and we curved this part of it so we'll go ahead and cut this out so when you cut it out you are going to have two pieces this way then you go ahead and cut out your neckline so we just label here as y which indicates our yoke so by the time you attach this this way this is what you are going to have and we've opened it up because you are going to use one piece for this and another piece for this so this is for the front block for the back block also we are going to go ahead and add one inch from our waistline so that we can have this ease around the flap so once you are done with that we'll go ahead and cut this out we are going to have now we'll go ahead and mark our neckline That is three and a half. For the deepness of our neckline, I'm going to make use of three inches. I will go ahead and connect it also. Okay, I'm going to use like a square neckline. Now, because the back is also going to have yoke effect, We'll go ahead and determine how many inches we want for our yoke. So I'm still going to maintain the same 5 inches I made use of. I will go ahead and cut the straightening of the lines. Now you will discover that for the back block, we have a straight... You will discover that for the back block, we have a straight neckline for the yoke because what we achieved at this front is sweetest and you cannot have a sweetest neckline at your back so we'll go ahead and cut this out so i'll label this as my back yoke so this is what we will have for the back i'm going to make use of this african prints and african prints are available at our store Head to fold my fabric into two after folding the fabric into two i place my back block on it this is our back block and i'll go ahead and cut this out so after cutting it out we will have two pieces for the back block on ahead to fold the fabric into two and I place my front block on it then I'll cut this out so after cutting it out we are going to have two 
pieces for the front block we go ahead and set this aside for the upper bodies we've gone ahead to fold our fabric into two and then i placed my front block on it so i'm going to go ahead and cut this out this is what you are going to have for the front block so you can see the sweetheart neckline so we'll go ahead and set this aside I had to fold my the back block on it and then I'll go ahead and cut this out so for the back block we are going to have two pieces and you can see the neckline is straight for the back block now for the yoke part of for the yoke part i'm going to make use of this net so i'll go ahead and fold it into two and i'll place i folded it into two i'll go ahead and place it and then i'll cut this out cutting this part right make sure you leave about half inch that you're going to like your sewing allowance where you're going to stitch to your upper block this is what you are going to have so this is what you are going to show you what the complete front block will look like so you can see this part dropping this is what we are going to have. You can see our arm O and everything. So this is actually so beautiful. And then we'll place the yoke of the back block. We'll go ahead and cut this out. Now what I'm using to cut this lace is electric scissors. Is electric scissors and this electric scissors is available at our store now what this electric scissor does is that you plug it to the light and it can also work without light okay so even if there's no light you can still use it and if there's light you can also use this now this is actually very hot but what this does especially when you are cutting fabrics like lace you want to cut sequence you don't want to like end the lower part while you are cutting with this electric scissors it tends to like seal up the lower part like when you are cutting your lace let me show you guys what i mean look at the lace we cut out you can see that it is not bringing out any form of trade so when you want to cut fabric like lace like your chiffon and you want to like cut it neatly without having this excess trade i recommend you get your electric scissors and this electric scissors is available and i'm going to be giving out discounts to every of my subscribers so when you want to order just make sure you use the code subscriber for the back block you are going to have two pieces this way and for the lower part also for the lower part also you will also have two pieces coming this so the first thing we are going to do now is this is our interface and this is the front block so we'll go ahead and place it this way stitch this side stitch our neckline we are going to leave the arm up because we are going to fix in a sleeve so we we'll basically stitch this side and our neckline block where we have two pieces we we'll also go ahead and place our interface we we'll go ahead and stitch this side the neckline and this other side for the front block this is what we have you can see our sweetheart neckline and for the back block we have two pieces this way now for our trousers where we have the front block 
I've gone ahead to cut out four pieces for my pocket. So I will go ahead and mark seven inches for my pocket and stitch it all the way down. So I will attach this piece, each piece to each side of it for both the front block and the back block and then I'll stitch it all the way down. Fixing the pocket. This is what we have. We've gone ahead to sew each piece of the pocket to each block. So what we are going to do now is we are going to go ahead and stitch this side all the way. Stitch the second side and I'll show you guys what it looks like. After stitching the side, this is what we are going to have. So you can see our pair of trousers, you can see our pockets. So this is one and this is the second piece. Front block, we'll go ahead and fix in our yoke. So we'll go ahead and stitch this all the way and we we'll also aim the neckline and for the back block we we'll also go ahead and attach the yoke and also aim the neckline we have this is what we have and for the front block this is what we have so we've gone ahead to aim the neckline and also fix our net so now what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and place our back, our upper block this way. We'll go ahead and use our basic measurement to stitch this side, stitch the other side and join our shoulders. So basically the only part we are not going to stitch is the back where we have zip allowance so that we can have like a single piece for the front block so after doing that so after joining it this is what we have so you can see we have a single piece for the upper block now for our what we are going to have so we'll go ahead and join the flap of the front so basically that's all we just want to do we'll join the flap of the front so when I join that, I'll show you guys what it looks like. After joining the upper bodies to the trousers, you are going to have like your opening this way for your zip allowance, which also extends to the flap, to the back side, the back flap of your trousers. So we'll go ahead and fix in our zip at the back. So once we fix in our zip, I'll go ahead and show you guys what our jumpsuit looks like. So guys, this is what our yoke jumpsuit looks like. You can see and we have our yoke at the upper part of our block. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.